Well, grace and peace be to each of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is indeed the Christ, the Anointed One of God, and let us pray. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this day. We give you thanks and praise for this time of the year where we remember your Son's passion. We remember that all of this began before you created the world. All of this began before there was even time. All of this began to be set in motion in Genesis chapter 3. And so we thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for his passion. We thank you that you have counted us as your own children by faith in your Son, our Savior. Now we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, okay, I read from Exodus chapter 12, and then we sang ancient words. And so you might be wondering, wait a minute, aren't we New Testament people? Why Exodus 12? Come on. Well, the reason for this is because Jesus is the Passover lamb. And his blood covers us. And when God looks at us and sees his son's blood covering us, and sees that we are under the blood of Jesus, he passes over us. And he doesn't bring upon us the judgment, the just judgment our sins deserve. But there's another reason for my choosing Exodus 12 today. And the reason is this. At sundown today, Jews throughout the world will celebrate the Passover. Passover was the meal Jesus was sharing with his disciples the night of his betrayal and arrest. And it was at that particular Passover, at the Passover meal first eaten in Egypt, had its fulfillment in him. In other words, since the first Passover, every single part of it pointed to God and his anointed one, Jesus. We call God's anointed one the Christ. That's Greek. Jews call him the Messiah, their Mashiach. There are quite a few elements to the Passover meal, but the two elements I want to uh, emphasize today, the two that Jesus especially emphasized on the night of his betrayal were the bread and the wine. So let's concentrate on those two things. The bread. It was unleavened. In other words, it had no yeast in it. It could not rise. In the scriptures, leavening oftentimes is a symbol of sin. So this unleavened bread was, a, was pointing to the fact that the one who was to come would have no sin in him. He would be blameless. The bread itself kind of looks like a cracker today, the matzah. It was striped and it had piercings in it. Well, that finds its scriptural reference in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. And these are the words, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. 1,450 years before Jesus celebrated Passover with his disciples, God gave Israel the sign that would identify the Messiah and told them exactly what would happen to him. He would be wounded, not for only Israel's transgressions, but for the transgressions of all the world. He would be bruised, not only for Israel's transgressions and Israel's iniquities, but for the iniquities of the entire world. The judgment we deserve was going to be put on him. And through what he would do, we would have the healing that we needed. In Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3, we hear these words. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, 
who forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. Aren't we aware of the fact that when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, not a one of them was sick, not a one of them was infirm. Can you imagine two million people, or thereabouts, and not a one of them had a headache? Not a one of them was limping? You know, that's amazing. But the night before they had had the Passover meal, and it was a meal that marks what God was going to do to bring healing to all people. Ah, God gave the signs, but so many of God's people missed it. Moving to the cup of wine Jesus takes into his hands, Luke tells us specifically that the cup Jesus took was the third cup of Passover. There were four cups of wine associated with Passover. They were either consumed in whole or in part. Why in the world did Jesus pick the third cup to focus upon? Why not the first? Why not the second? Why not the fourth? Ah, this is why. Each one of these cups had specific significance. They had all actually been given a name. Their names came from Exodus, chapter 6, 6 through 7. There we read, Say therefore to the sons of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from their bondage. I will also redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. Then I will take you for my people and I will be your God and you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Isn't this what God did? Sure it is. And so the liturgy of the Passover, the four cups focused on the four I wills here. I will bring you out, says the Lord. I will deliver you, says the Lord. I will also redeem you, says the Lord, and I will take you to be my people. So what happened on the night of his betrayal during that Passover meal Jesus was celebrating with his disciples? Well, this is what happened. Our Redeemer took the cup of redemption and said, Drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. All along, God's people, through the observance and through the celebration of Passover, they were being shown exactly what God was going to do for them. In a very real sense, if you can accept this kind of an analogy, in a very real sense, each year they met in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, they were actually going through dress rehearsals. Dress rehearsals which was to lead them to recognize their Messiah when he came. They were being prepared for their Passover lamb, the true Passover lamb, the Redeemer who would shed his blood for them and for all people of all time. Ah, but so many of God's people missed it. The bread of Passover points to Jesus. The third cup of wine points to Jesus. For over 3,450 years now, the vast majority of God's people have missed the fact that Passover was something other than God bringing them out of Egypt. Now we're gathered here today because we know the something more. We know what God did through his son Jesus Christ, the Passover lamb, the one, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We know what God did, which is why, and I would ask you to join me in this today, that our prayer, our particular prayer needs to be for God's people Israel. Scattered throughout the entire world, it needs to be, Lord, remove the veil from off of your people's eyes and let them see Jesus. Let them see him tonight. Amen.